Hello folks, this is Mike from Mopar Pro. Wanted to show you a new car restoration update. Uh, this is my personal car. Uh, this is a car that has been in storage for a super long time. This car is a 1938 Chrysler Imperial two-door coupe. A very rare car. It's been in Long Island, New York you know within the surrounding area supposedly it was from flushing good old flushing queens you could see the original headliner still in there look at the gauges how sick are those gauges so i'm going to show you this car's been off the road there's the new york inspection since 1970 so that's at least 52 years i think it's longer you know, these cars have a certain smell when they sit. They just get this beautiful aroma. Uh, and it just has that aroma. I mean, look at that. Look at that trunk emblem. I actually took steel wool and I polished it. It was, it was very dull. I mean, that's before the steel wool on one taillight. And that's after the steel wool. So it does a nice cleanup job. And, uh... It's a really, it's a really cool car. I mean, this thing is, I've never seen one actually in person. These are just hard to find, you know. Most of the cars from the 1930s got rode out pretty hard because they didn't produce cars in this country between 42, you know, and, well, they did not 42, but they stopped probably, I don't, I don't know exactly, but let's say eight months into 42, World War II happened. So the production was cut. So between 42 to 45 and a half, they really didn't make any civilian cars. And it wasn't just Chrysler Corporation. It was basically everybody. Everyone shut down and said, hey, let's make uh, tanks for World War II and guns and ammunition. So there was really no civilian car production. So if you were lucky enough to have bought a car between 19... You know, let's say 35 and 1942, those cars got rode out pretty hard because there was you couldn't buy a new car. So you had to use what was there. So that's why a lot of these cars just, you know, you don't see a lot of the 30s cars because they just got rode out so hard they ended up in the scrap pile. So that's why this is a pretty rare bird. I mean, the sweeping lines of the trunk are just incredible. I love the Art Deco style. This, to me, this is just art. I mean, if my wife said, okay, I would put this in the living room, you know what I mean? But she doesn't feel that way. She'd rather go to Home Goods, which I can understand, and buy some tchotchkes over there. But this, is, this car is really the cat's meow. I just, I'm in love with it. I don't know why. I, I don't know if I'm sick or it's just a disease I have. It's probably, this is a disease, this old car thing. This all started out as a hobby, folks. I'm just like you. I'm just a guy who loves old cars. And I, you know, I needed car parts, and I called a bunch of people, and, uh, you know, I couldn't believe the price of these car parts. The price of the car parts were just out of control. I, mean, I remember it was 1994. I called a guy in Georgia, this guy Frank Mitchell, and I needed some, some P15 stuff, and I asked him, and everything was like three and four, five hundred dollars And he was like, and I was like, wow, it's a lot of money, but I needed it, so I bought it. So that was how the, the business kind of came into fruition and uh that's pretty much the story but yeah this is the new project i'm i think i'm going to keep this as survivor throw some tires on it and uh, i'll show you the engine there's no engine in the car they took it out it probably probably blew up or so who knows i i think the guy who owned this car was an old long island hot rod guy everyone Everyone in Long Island's into hot rods and putting big motors and things. So this guy, you know, took out the old straight eight. Now, I actually looked at the bill of sale from 1970. This guy was a used car dealer. He paid $30 for this baby in 1970. So he bought it for 30 bucks. I wish I would have paid 30. Let's take a hold on. Let me let me go to the engines. Hold on. Okay, folks, this is the original engine block right here. You can see that in the 30s cars, all the cylinders are exposed right here. Uh, versus a, a later straight eight, this is a C49 engine, which is a 1950 Chrysler straight eight. The cylinders are not exposed. 
So that's the original engine right there, all stripped out. This is the way I got it. I basically have to send this to the machine shop, have it machined, honed, bored, and hopefully I could put this baby back together. And if you see right here, there's the crankshaft. Uh, that is probably the original crankshaft. Now I can't use the crankshaft out of the, uh, the C49 engine because that's a fluid drive car. Uh, this 38 Chrysler is a standard shift car. Crankshafts are different. So uh, I didn't know that someone had just brought that into my, uh, my wheelhouse. You can't know everything. So one of my buddies uh, told me that. So that's, that's, what I'm, uh, that's what I'm up against. But I'm going to do it. I have enough resources, I think. I mean, if I, if I can't do it, nobody else can. So I shouldn't say that. But it's not an easy thing to do. You know, basically put an engine together with no parts. So I got to either find a, a 37.8 engine, but I'd rather use that one because it's the original engine. I'm just a stickler like that. But I want to see this thing on the Long Island Expressway doing 45, 50 miles an hour. I'd be very happy. All right, folks, you guys have a great weekend. If you need any parts, let me know. I hope you take care of your cars this weekend, drive them a little bit. But that's what it's all about. It's all about getting out there and driving this old metal and showing everybody what you got. Have a great weekend. See you on the road.